Welcome to Why I Like Houdini 1. Topic, scene, geometry, points, vertices, primitives, detail, and the really cool concept, one of the concepts why I like Houdini so much, packed primitives. I think this all has to do together. It makes sense to have this in one lesson. It has is sort of interconnected. So let's dive into Houdini. I already prepared something here. Let's put this to the side. Actually, let's create a box. And by, if you click on the box and just press enter, the box will be created right at the origin of the coordinate system. Makes gives you nicer uh, values right now. Um, so this box has got, I turn on the point numbers, um, has got, like most boxes, eight points, zero to seven, where it starts at counting at zero. And um, it has got vertices, quite a few more. And it has got um, primitives, six of them which are sort of the sides, faces or whatever, but primitives uh, can be other stuff as well, which i show you in a second actually too. But um, let's try to understand this. What are vertices? For that, I'm splitting the pane here once. Turn this one to vertices and another time and turn this one to primitives. So what have we got here? Why isn't this? Oh. So this, this and this. Yeah, now we've got all three. Points, vertices, primitives, and detail is something special, which we'll talk about in a second. Not in much detail, but needs to be mentioned. So, points, vertices, primitives, and detail. Points. That's pretty simple. But now vertices. They don't are actually not numbered here. Like 1, 2, 3. They are 0, column 0, and so on. And... This has got six sides, so six primitives for the cube. And actually, let's select one of the sides, like this. So, primitive zero is selected, and now you can see, now it makes sense. Here it says point number, and they're not corresponding. The second number here is two, two, but this is three, and there the three, this is two. And if you look at it, it's point number zero, which is this one, goes to the first, well, to the next vertice, which is one, which goes to the next one, which is three, which goes to the next one, which is two. Um, yeah, that's the way it's done. You might say, what the fuck? Where are my edges? There you go. Let's select some edges and let's group them. Model, group, okie doke. Um, and see, the group is consistent. Uh, the, the edges are actually not numbered. They're always made up of the points. So you have the edge... 3 to point 0.1, point 0.2 to point 0.3, and point 0.0 to point 0.2. So there's actually no edges in the data structure. They're implicit. They, are, they get created by, <laughs> by the primitives and the vertices. And uh, sort of an edge is like a vertice. Yeah. Um, 
you can read much more about this in the really great documentation about those basic things, by the way. Um, it's amazing. Let me just have a look. There you go. Geometry attributes. There's a lot about the attributes. So really read this really great um, documentation. Side Effects is really doing a great job with the documentation. The only problem is it's never up to date because their product development is faster than they actually can write documentation. Let's get this out of the way again. Okay, um, so the other thing I wanted to show you is actually this button here. So let's say within this um, within this object, the box object, you want to create a second box object. Or you want to create, let, let's say you want to create a sphere. Obviously you could press the tab key, type sphere, and create a sphere. But let's say you want to do this with the shelf tools. So if I press sphere now, press enter again, so it creates created at the origin of the scene, it actually creates a second geometry or a second object within your scene with a sphere, and it's only the sphere in there. Hmm. When you use this button, which is pretty cool, um, you can turn it to create in context. Then now it turns into like a box, and the and the um, the spheres here <laughs> are inside a box. Otherwise, they're like this. I I like those icons. They're really cool. But what I don't like is that they've hidden this button there. Okay, must be historic reasons or whatever. But once you've um, turned this into create in context, and you press the sphere, press enter, bam, it's next to it. Great stuff. Um, yeah, I think that was already a really important thing to show you because in the beginning it really annoyed me. The other thing is, let's turn off the point numbers and turn off those tabs again. Don't need them anymore. You know, in here, you sort of have a data flow going on. So for the sphere, let's create a color attribute. So all the points of the sphere go into this node and it adds a color attribute. When you're at this level, the object level or scene level, um, then what happens when you connect one thing with another? For example, you could c connect this um, and you already saw the word coming up there, didn't you? It said parent. So this is now the parent of this one. When I rotate the box, let's rotate the box. Huh? Come on. It rotates the sphere. Let's move the sphere a little bit to the side, makes it more... Ah, yeah, and this box is a sphere now because I have the focus here. Let's put the focus to the box. So now when you translate the box, the sphere will translate as well. So this is like... Uh, linking for animation purposes or whatever, yeah? So it has nothing to do with data flow on this level, on the scene level, object level. It is a linking of objects. I use this quite a lot for lights. I really like to build like a, a light setup and you can turn it all in one. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but in the beginning you get really confused. You think like, because they look the same, sort of, those Icons. It depends on the level you're in. Now you're at scene level. Okay, go down here. The other thing I wanted to show you today is um, 
is yeah the concept of packed primitives for that i've prepared something it's not much also really simple okay comes up like this um all i did was here so i made a tree and i made another tree really great modeling um I gave them an attribute called ID. This one as well. The other tree has got the ID value 1. This one has got ID value 2. The pack nodes, which is what we're going to talk about right now in a second, they're turned off, they're bypassed. When you press this button, you can, well, with this button, you can bypass nodes. Remember, now data is traveling through it. There's a switch. Um, and the other thing I built is a grid, uh, created an attribute on it as well called ID and randomized that. So now the grid is active and you see some of the points have, um, let's turn on the points, there are the points, have ID 0 and one have ID 1. I put this into for each loop, and that's not what this lesson is about. <coughs> Sorry. And um, out here, we have a forest. Now, this forest has now a gazillion points, 5,753. Let's have a look what happens when you turn on pack, when I bypass them. What happens here is, it gets, oh, let's look at the one tree now. The one tree turns into one point, and it has got the ID 0. The other tree, ID 1. So, when we now look at the forest, it's only 100 points, because that grid has got 100 points, 10 by 10, 10 10 rows, 10 columns. It's a very efficient way um, to deal with geometry. Let's actually do 100 and 100. Takes a while, but does it? And make it 100 meters and 100 meters. But still, even the viewport yeah, handles easily 10,000 of those trees. In fact, you could even here not display full geometry, but like a bounding box if it gets too heavy, or just the centroid or a point cloud. But in this case, we might as well, it's such a simple tree, um, leave it at full geometry. Really, really cool concept. And um, so... Basically, you can use a tree, pack it up in a suitcase. That's what the little logo here, let me see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, it turns just into a, a point. Really, really cool concept. I love it. One of the reasons I really like Houdini. And uh, yeah. So I don't forget. Okay, let's turn off that overlay. Um, packed primitives is really, really well documented. It's amazing. And it saves you a lot of um, memory when rendering. I've rendered millions of trees with a lot more geometry than this. It's amazing. Um, and it... It's not only for that. The thing is, it's not only in the renderer. It's when you when you are. Um, uh, let's uh, let's go back into the scene. I have to show you that. It's so cool. Let's turn this a little bit down now, just so it gets a bit less crowded in the viewport. Let's get turn this off. Now we have here this forest. I wanted, didn't want to condense it like this. 
So when I go down here now and go on points, no, actually I should be on primitives. So, and I can click on that tree, move it, click on that tree, move it, click on that tree, move it. Um, when you, I mean, like, there is possibilities on selection of, like, just the connected geometry and so on, but this geometry is not connected. But now it's one entity, like, and you can really, like, easily manipulate it or place it anywhere. Um, it keeps a bounding box, and uh, if you want to, you can also always unpack it again. So you could take each single tree, unpack it, do something to it, pack it again, whatever. Excellent concept. I love it. So that's it for today. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.